For all of you who do not know, my name's Nat. I'm the head of community at an organization called Exceptional Individuals. We're a social enterprise that supports individuals who are neurodivergent, dyslexia, dyspraxia, autism, ADHD, Tourette's, anxiety, and help people get decent quality jobs. We're going to look at case examples of roles that have worked for those who have dyslexia and go from there. Have any of you ever heard of this book called The Dyslexic Advantage? It's all about how dyslexic brains uniquely advantage in order to solve certain problems. When we think of, I can't get a job because of dyslexic, that seems quite negative. But actually, there are many roles, jobs, and opportunities which we would have an advantage over normal people. What skills do people with dyslexia usually have? Are there any skills that you've noticed in yourself or people that you know or family members that also have dyslexia that you see time and time again? I can't stress this enough. We are individuals. If we look at the typeless qualities we have, we can narrow down potential. We've got relationships, high levels of empathy because we've been through it. We can relate. Out the box thinking. A classic example that we're going to touch upon today is Henry Ford who, when someone says, I need a faster horse, he made the automobile. That was out of the box thinking. We've got strategic planning, relationships, good communication, lateral creative thinking. Let's start with Richard Branston. It's said that 40% of all self-made millionaires have dyslexia. Most people with dyslexia try to go along the status quo. Status quo wasn't designed for us. But if you decide I'm going to do my own thing, the thing that made Richard Branson great as an entrepreneur is his dyslexia allowed him to take more risks. To give a bit more about Richard Branson's background, he was a whippersnapper and he tried to sell Christmas trees and he failed. He then decided to create a magazine called Student. As a student, he was able to make the hay. Then in the 70s, he starts selling mail order records. He creates a record shop. Guess what? He calls it Virgin because he was a virgin in business. By that point, he already made 5 million. He was male and white, came from a Western country. He did have those going to him. It's not a fair kind of comparison, but you can still think the skill set he used in order to make it reality, you could still use similar skill sets. I'm like, I'm already this age. Why have I not achieved the same level of success as others? You can't compare, it's just different scenarios. Moving on to the 80s, he starts to really branch out. He starts doing vision, games, Atlantic holidays, TV channels, airships, even comdoms. He's a creative. And that's what a lot of us are, a television production degree. I worked in a charity. Then I did filmmaking. I work with people who are neurodiverse. I'm always changing. And I realized that shouldn't be seen as a failure. It's what makes me good, like innovation. Then moving to the 90s, he does more services and he's getting bigger. He likes music, but he also likes space and other things. 2000, he's creating even more. He never stops. This was more about creating things. What he would typically do is create something and then give it away. My question to all of you is why do you think dyslexics seem to change jobs a lot? Is it because we get bored easily? If we can understand why people with dyslexia find it harder to find employment, narrow down type of roles. We've got multiple interests. We have multiple interests. What makes us unique is a good question to ask. We've got roles or sectors don't fit financial demands. We need money. Any job will do. And maybe you just find any job and eventually that job turns to be a job you're really good at. A lot of people don't want to go into sales, but people with dyslexia tend to be really good at sales. So we don't always know what we're good at until we try it. When I was younger, I thought I'd be an artist or a cartoonist, but I realized I'm much better at this. I have friends who are say, oh, I don't really want this job. You need a job at the moment. Get that job. You can always leave. When you take a job that doesn't completely align, then look for the next one until you find that suits you. You might never find the job that's right for you. They can struggle to work on wordy areas such as web chats. Maybe it's because there are less jobs available or as the job description changes. There's been tribunal cases where someone was on the telephone and they updated the system and it was on web chat and they got fired. So the role they signed up for wasn't the role that they ended up doing long term. Great answers, everyone. A quick quote from Mr. Sir Richard. My dyslexia has shaped the vision right from the very... It's helped me to think big, but to keep our message simple. People with dyslexia are good at thinking big. We will think of things that haven't been done before, but we're able to communicate it in the simplest way. There's an Einstein quote. If you can't explain a complex subject in a short sentence, you don't really know it well enough. The less amount of words we use doesn't mean a lack of ability, it means a firm understanding of the subject. Which of these musicians did you know were dyslexic? It gets a bit iffy when you're talking about who has dyslexia or not in the past, but anyone from recent times, they were normally diagnosed. Lou Reed, absolutely dyslexic. John Lennon, I read his autobiography. They talked to all his teachers 
and he had all the characteristics of dyslexia and also share from working class backgrounds. John Lennon was working class. He lived in a decent house. His favorite author was Lewis Carroll, who did Alice in Wonderland, which you can see how that creativity flows into everything they do. This is a quote from a singer, Carly Simon. My family has been given the gift of music. We have taken to music because music is something we can do much more easily than we can in the reading department. Made her stand out, made her more unique. Do you think less choice is a good thing or a bad thing? Maybe it depends on the circumstances. I'm a vegetarian, not because I want to save the planet. The reason is I struggle with choice. When I look at menus, my brain gets overwhelmed. I like having one or two things to pick from. It was one of the reasons I became a vegetarian. Having less choice was good for me. In the job market, it can help you just say, you know what, I need one of these jobs, like slimming down the selection. I prefer it when I get over one, only one or two. Then another profession is a perfumer, someone who specializes in smells and senses and making you smell good. Joe Malone, who most of us has heard of the brand, created a massive business and pretty said she sold that business. And since then, she went on to found another organization, Joe Loves. She is outspoken about her dyslexia. Lack of choice can help you narrow down. I doubt when she was in school, they told her that one day you'll be into perfume, but there was a gap in the market and somewhere she could rise up the ranks. I know I'm talking about entrepreneurs, but it's more about the profession. You don't have to be your own boss. Knowing about the different sectors might suit you well. Joe said, my dyslexia is not a disability. It's an ability to think differently. And if this world needs people who think differently. When I think of roles which are good for people with dyslexia, I think of roles that are a little bit higher up the ladder. And that's because they normally allow for more freedom, more autonomy. Not if you're looking for one of your first jobs, because it's hard to get those sort of uh, innovative jobs when you haven't proven yourself at the first level to begin with. Maybe we're still looking for what makes a job inclusive and accessible for those with dyslexia. Do any of you have other conditions? Because a lot of people with dyslexia also have ADHD. And sometimes we struggle to keep it simple. I'm, I'm also on the spectrum, which makes it challenging when looking at a list of jobs because there's no list which really represents you. The next one is Nick Jones. I think really recently he's just stepped down after, I want to say 27 years, as the C Soho house, a high-end club, and he's a restauranteur. A lot of people who are neurodiverse tend to be in the service industry because they're the easiest jobs to get at the beginning. It's hard work. It's so much concentration and moving around. People start at the bottom and work their way up. This is what Nick did. He started at the bottom, realized he was good at it. Then he thought, why can't I do this myself? So he did. Nick says, one great advantage of being dyslexic is simplification. Simplifying things allows for better decision-making and is a help when running a company. Jobs which allow people to communicate verbally in a sync to the point way. Storytelling. Another great asset of those with dyslexia. A lot of people with dyslexia do tend to be really great salespeople. If you're someone who loves talking, telling stories, bringing things to life, this could be an area that you'd be well suited for. Technically, I'm in sales because I go to companies talking to them about neurodiversity and helping people. It doesn't feel like sales to me because it's something I believe in and it actually is doing good in the world. Do not think that you just have to be selling microwaves. There's other areas we can branch off into. I worked as a um, production manager at a TV company years ago, and I thought it was my dream job. It was not the right fit to me. It was the attitude. We were very accepting. A bad experience can really put you off. April says, I once had a job as an Avon rap. I quit after five years. Five years is decent. Those jobs are challenging. Once you run out of friends, it's difficult to sell. You gave it a good go. Next is carpentry. I love carpentry. I don't do it as a business because I like to keep some hobbies as a personal passion. You try to monetize it and make money out of it and you stop loving it. That is one of the worst things you can do to lose your passion. One person this was very true for was Ingevan Kamprad, founder of IKEA. IKEA was actually one of my first jobs. I really liked it. My job was, it wasn't going to be a job forever. I ultimately got fired for eating too many meatballs. Why was carpentry a good fit for him? He was good with his hand. He really struggled with memory and with numbers. And most of dyslexia, reading is a small part of it. It's also to do with concentration, memory, recall, retention. He named all his furniture after Swedish names. It worked. He was creating a system that worked for him rather than one that would work for years later for me. But I applaud his approach. He also created instruction manuals that put all pictures. This is IKEA can save costs because they don't have to print and translate them multiple languages. These quirks made IKEA's iconic. Parents wanted academic room. 
Dyslexia can be a barrier, but it's only one barrier. When I was in school, they kicked me out of doing academic subjects because they thought I was going to fail. They gave me a choice. You have to do uh, childcare or bricklaying. I didn't want to do childcare, but I also didn't want to do bricklaying. They limited my dyslexia, meant I couldn't do English language and science and other subjects. But I started getting whittled down further and further to eventually I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And I left school and worked really hard at filmmaking. That's what got me into college. It was tiring, but that kind of, I'll do my own thing was my saving grace. Otherwise, I'd probably be on benefits for the rest. Sunjan also enjoyed working with Metal at school and still enjoyed jewelry making. Lauren says, enjoyed creating and selling ideas to motivate people to collaborate on shared initiatives, policy and strategy roles, as long as the freedom to spot and pursue opportunities. And a lot of us are entrepreneurial, but not all of us want to be entrepreneurs. So you could be an entrepreneur who helps innovate from within. You can use that skill set in more than one place. Please do not think that I'm saying the only route is to be your own. I like being my own boss, but I also don't like it being my only income. I like being an employee. It balances out my stress and anxiety. I found a company which has the best of both worlds. That stability, but also that creativeness. If I didn't have those two things, it wouldn't be meeting my needs. Here is a quote from the late Lord Richard Rogers. He was a really famous architect. He says, dyslexics have a way of looking at problems and turning them on their heads. You don't accept the standards because you don't know what the standard is. That's another good point. We might struggle with knowing the rules of the game, particularly those of us who have other neurodivergent conditions. I think the rules of the game can be difficult. Do you create your own? And sometimes it might not work, but when it does, you're really onto something. And that worked for Lord Richard. What challenges do dyslexics face when finding employment? There are some blockers which make it harder. People see dyslexic as a one-dimensional condition, but it affects every single element of your life. Something which is a little bit difficult becomes really difficult. Any challenges which you think affect people with dyslexia more than those who do not? Or well, April says employers not understanding dyslexia or other types of neurodiversity. That is a big one. People do not understand it. Their knowledge is out. They make decisions based on old knowledge or preconceived ideas. We've got competency interview questions. We are set up to fail those, not because we're not competent. The questions were created for a neural mind. They're looking for people to solve problems in a certain way. Our brains do not solve problems that way. We're always going to fail. We work with companies, many want to help people with dyslexia, but they do not want to take away those multiple choice competency questions because they like having a very rudimental yes or no, you're suitable, you're not suitable. Confidence is a really big one. Dyslexia can be a challenge. Interviews, absolutely. Even getting an interview is more challenging. I'll make a CV or Photoshop. It'll be beautiful. There'll be spelling mistakes no matter how many times I look at it. I've missed out on a role just because the way my brain works, it's always trying to fill in the gaps. It's not so good when you want to do proof checking. We've got stigma. When people think of dyslexia, they think of dumb, stupid, incompetent, not being able to read. That is changing. But you might get an interviewer who understands it, or you might get someone who thinks that, how did you even get here today? Were you even able to read the instruction? It comes down to the management and the individual people within the company. It has to filter down to every single level. One of the biggest strengths of any neurodiverse individual is that we tend to be really passionate. Is it due to the inherent condition? I think it's due to having less options. When we find something we like, we'll put all our eggs in one basket. And a lot of the time we'll drop those eggs. But if we're given an environment where we can nurture them, we tend to flourish. Here's another quote. To be successful in business, you need to get your piece in the right order. Dyslexic people help with that. The passions, people, and product. We've already ticked the first box just by having dyslexia. We're on the right lane. Question from Hannah. Do you say you are dyslexic in a job application? For me, yes. I use it as an advantage. What's your greatest weakness? I'll say, oh, my dyslexia. However, that allows me to be outgoing, creative, ambitious. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone because it comes down to people's understanding. If you tell someone you have dyslexia and they have no knowledge of dyslexia, it's not going to mean anything. If you tell someone you have dyslexia and they have an outdated view of dyslexia, they're going to think negative views. Do a bit of research about the company. What is their policy on disabilities? Do they have different networks and groups? I make a decision for organization. If you don't tell them you have dyslexia and then you're struggling, they can't help you. It's a personal decision and tell you whether or not you should. There's advantages to doing it, but we've all had negative experiences. You've got to do it case by case. People with dyslexia tend to be great networkers. We might not be the best at reading or writing. We're more likely to have a larger network. 
Another potential job is being a chef. Jamie Oliver, classic dyslexic, used his charismatic personality to not only become a household name, but to create many businesses. He has over 70 franchises. He's got Jamie's Italian, Jamie Oliver's Pizzeria, Jamie's Deli, Jamie Oliver's Diner. He does it because of a passion to do. It's always a way of making money out of something. It doesn't have to be your own company. But for instance, if you like cooking and the only jobs you can get are minimum wage, there will be jobs that offer more. Easier said than done, but it's definitely possible. Jamie Oliver does a lot of interviews around his dyslexia. The really great case study on how someone turned from a way to thinking into a lifelong profession. He's continuously changing, innovating. Why are some of the reasons that people with dyslexia can make great employees? For one, very strong imaginative skills. Great at thinking up ideas, creating new things, innovation, basically. Reasoning skills, being able to verbally articulate why they are thinking what they're thinking. Strong communication skills, again, can be typically quite good at selling. Now, if any of you are thinking, I definitely don't have my skills, this is the average of everyone. We're all different. These are traits. We got explorers, finding new things, and connecting is key. It's not really saying any particular job is right for someone with dyslexia. What it is saying is that if you can find roles which have a lot of these characteristics within them, chances are you'll probably be okay. It's when people try and find roles which aren't catered towards that independent learning, creative thought, that socializing aspect where people struggle more. Here's a lovely picture of Jamie Oliver from South Park. What percentage of self-millionaires are dyslexic? is 40%. 40% of all self-made millionaires have dyslexia. But that same skill set which allowed them to put themselves out there help. One, being good at rejection. Two, being innovative and passionate about a subject and always keep finding new ways of learning. The richest person to ever live, believe, in terms of who created a company was dyslexic. Henry Ford, Ikea guy, the Rockefellers, and Watson from IBM. The richest person ever was Rick Henry Ford, who created the automobile. Then you've got designers like Walt Disney. He is so successful, even after death, he'll probably never die. An artist called Billy Bob Thornton, who some of you may know, says dyslexia drives you because you're trying to overcome something. They found a lot of people with dyslexia and OCD are high achievers into the arts, writing or whatever. We do compensate. If you struggle in one area, you tend to put that same amount of energy into another area. People with dyslexia are not less intelligent. We are just as intelligent, if not more, but we use that same intelligence and we put it in other places. You've got people like Steven Spielberg, one of the most creative individuals of all time. You've got the Dragon's Den and two people in Dragon's Den, people with dyslexia, tend to be really great at taking ideas and doing something with them. You've also got people like Ted Turner, created a brand new idea, the 24 hour news channel. You've got people like Charles Schwab, an investment banker, also has dyslexia, another fantastic dyslexic. We've got Henry Ford. There's also this person who created this company called Offset Solar. He says entrepreneurship is the ability to recognize the bigger picture, find where there's an opportunity to make someone's life better, design hypothesis around those opportunities, and continuously test your assumptions. Entrepreneurship and dyslexia, they overlap so much. Be entrepreneurial, be an entrepreneur. If you find jobs which are a conveyor belt, maybe it's not going to work for you. We've got people like Steve Jobs, who was dyslexic. There's also many other exceptional people who have dyslexia. In real estate, then we've got the food, Dal Sood, that person who created that was dyslexic. You've got toys, the person who invented a Nerf gun. How cool is that? They all have dyslexia and they're all different. They had their own way of doing things. From my perspective, that tends to be the key factor which determines whether or not a role is appropriate for someone with dyslexia. Before we finish up, another skill which people with dyslexia are good at is delegating. Never going to be the world's best writer. Other people are. There are going to be roles which are innovative, but eventually that innovation has to stop. That is when you can use that skill set of knowing people and delegating out. Yeah, great point. We've got also healthcare. You definitely wouldn't want someone who can't connect with you as a doctor, artist, photographer, fashion designer. We've got teams and project leadership, strategy, planning, partnership, policy, and public affairs. A lot of people who have dyslexia are better in more senior positions. If you're struggling, do not think it's always going to be that way. Because the more senior you get, the more opportunities you get to delegate and to have that freedom of being in control of a project. I think roles which tend to be, this is your job, you're done, you get a bit disconnected from, but it's where you can see it through. It's easier to get passionate about it. Thanks everyone and good luck on the jobs. I'll catch you next week.